coming up on Murky Seb's Wild Underwater Adventures. Howdy, and welcome to Murky Seb's Wild Underwater Adventures. Today we're in a place called Stony Creek, which is inland from Caboolture. And we're looking for a unique species of rainbow fish only found in southeast Queensland. We're also looking for some purple spotted gudgeons, and if we're really lucky, we'll see some crayfish along the way as well. So come along and let's get adventuring. So we travelled up the creek for a few kilometres. There's a swimming hole down the bottom, but we went well past that, and we saw something above the water. We saw these water spiders. And you can see this water spider waiting for their prey to come along. They'll eat small insects and fish, and you can see the little hairs on their legs keeping the surface tension. They can swim across the water maintaining the surface tension with their little hairs. And if you were to put some oil or some washing up liquid in the water, it would break the surface tension and these little spiders would drown. So we kept going up the river, and we got really lucky. We've come to this nice little pool here with these waterfalls in the background, and we've discovered a family of what appears to be spangled perch. Let's take a closer look at them. And indeed, these are spangled perch, and we got to see a nice little school of them. We saw a school of four spangled perch in this fast flowing bit of the creek. Now, spangled perch are really good predators. You can tell they're good predators because they got those big eyes and they can see any little signs of movement and if they see it as a uh, meal, then they'll go and attack it. Now, spangled perch will eat little insects or crustaceans. They'll even have a go at little fish. But you can see there's lots of little fish in this part of the creek and these spangled perch weren't interested in them. Because they got those big eyes, they could see the camera straight away and they didn't want to hang around. But after a while, they realized the camera wasn't a threat and they didn't mind swimming by. Now the spangled perch will lay their eggs upstream and they're usually in pretty fast flowing water. So their eggs will get washed down and after a couple of days, they'll hatch way downstream and then the little babies will take a few days before they're ready to start eating and then as they grow bigger and bigger they'll make their way up the creek and they'll usually hang around in small groups as you can see these ones are in a group of four and four was about the maximum number that we saw Spangle perch are found all the way from Western Australia over to Queensland and New South Wales and the Northern Territory. But they do have slight differences in their colour. You can see these ones, they'll look quite different than the ones in Western Australia. And these ones are from Southeast Queensland. They have a really beautiful pattern on them, which they've adapted to blend in perfectly with their surroundings. You can see them against the rocks, they, they barely stand out at all. They're such beautiful fish, and you can keep these fish in an aquarium. And they make great little aquarium fish. However, they will attack other fish in the aquarium. But you can keep a small school of spangle perch, and they'll be really exciting to watch. There's some debate over if their eggs can survive being dried out because they live in the Northern Territory and in the Northern Territory the water sources will dry up. But they'll lay their eggs in these water sources and there have been reports of when it rains lots of baby spangle perch appearing. However, it hasn't been observed whether they have this ability or not. Wow, what amazing creatures. And they're in a pretty fast flowing bit of creek here, but they have no trouble keeping up with it because they're a really powerful fish. Despite only being around 15 to 20 centimeters long, they got a lot of power behind them. Oh, I could watch these guys all day, but we got to keep going and see what else is in this creek. 
Now we found a deep bit of water here. You can see it's a pristine environment. We got really lucky, so we had a good look in here. And you can see a mysterious fish off in the distance, but we'll get to that later. And here's some more of the Spangle Perch. This is a group of three swimming along quite happily in this large bit of water. There was also lots of rainbow fish swimming alongside the Spangle Perch and also some smelt. You can see the rainbow fish and a few little smelt swimming by there. They're natives, so it's really good to see lots of natives in this creek. Really healthy populations. It's interesting seeing the smelt swim alongside the rainbows. These fish are so well camouflaged. You can only see them when they move, and they're called firetail gudgeons. They get that name because in the breeding season, the males will get bright orange fins, and they'll become darker in colour. They'll also eat any little shrimp or little fish that can fit in their mouths. But they hide in the bottom of the creeks and they stay really still. They camouflage so well and then they'll strike at anything that comes by them. It was really hard to get any footage of them because I could barely see them for how well camouflaged they were. There's some more lovely rainbow fish. Unfortunately, this firetail gudgeon has got some fungus that's infected their body and they'll die from that fungus quite soon. So that's a real shame to see, but these other ones were nice and healthy and there was a good number of them. They're found from Queensland to southern New South Wales. They'll also get a bit of white in those orange fins. They make a great addition to your ponds or your aquariums. And here's a nice bee getting a drink. The bees will often come down to the river to get some water. And there's another one. Aren't they amazing creatures? This was a really beautiful creek. There was no path we were following, we were just following the creek. Lots of nice waterfalls and plants, and we heard lots of birds, but we didn't see any birds. In just about every pool we looked in, there was all kinds of native fish. However, we didn't see many shrimp. Typically in these rivers we'll find lots of shrimp. And here's some interesting plant that's growing along the, the water. I'm not sure what kind of plant it is, so if anyone knows, please leave a comment. Trapped in this pool behind me are the most colourful rainbow fish I have ever seen. And there's a few males in here fighting for space. And the most colourful male appears to be the one that's winning the space at the moment. He's the one that the females are going to be most interested in. And the rainbows will lay their eggs in the roots of the plants along the banks of this river. So let's check them out. Now these rainbows are crimson spotted rainbows. And if you've seen these in an aquarium, it's unlikely you've seen them as colourful as these. Look at the bright red fins and those males having a go at each other. Oh no, they're fighting. And then the females, they're less colourful and they have a more slender body shape to the males. The males are those really colourful ones with a black stripe going along their fins and then they have some bright red fins when it's time for them to impress the ladies. But all year round they have a nice green, yellow and red stripe going down them. But also, when you look at them from above, they have a bright blue patch on their head and back and it shines really well when it's hit with a light. They're some of the most colourful fish on this planet. And they're really great to keep in an aquarium or in a fish pond. They're really good at keeping 
uh, the mosquitoes under control, and they'll eat little insects and little crustaceans. But they'll mainly eat anything that lands on the surface of the water. They're a really fast moving fish. As you can see by this fast flowing bit of water, they have no troubles keeping up with the current. Now these crimson spotted rainbows are found all throughout the east coast of Australia. They're a fairly common species and aren't we lucky that they are a common species because look how pretty they are. It's funny seeing these schools of rainbows because there's often some other natives swimming alongside them. And this is the kind of environment that they'll breed in. In this grass there'll be some roots up a little bit further and the female will go lay her eggs and then the male will come and fertilize those eggs and he'll guard the territory and make sure no other males come in and interfere with his, his patch of the river. And look at that lovely blue on this male's head. Oh, I could watch them all day, but we got to keep moving and see what else is in this river. And my guide knocked over this piece of wood and you can see a spider's web. This could be a funnel web spider, but I didn't want to get too close to it, so I just left it be. Now, my guide decided to get under the water and you can see the rainbows don't mind being around him at all. And he pointed out this moving object. And then I got the camera and had a close look at it. And it was a shrimp. We hadn't seen many shrimp. And this is a long-armed shrimp. And this particular shrimp is almost see-through. And you can see he's got quite the meal there. No doubt he'll be feeding on this for a few days. And this meal happened to be a frog that had somehow gotten trapped underneath the rock. And he's got his work cut out for him there. Uh, these shrimp are mainly scavengers. However, if any little fish come in front of them, they will use those claws to grab hold of them. They're not as interested in algae as other shrimp. They're more interested in scavenging uh, the dead bodies of creatures just like that one. He's not going to be able to eat it all by himself though. There'll be some other shrimp that'll come and get their own uh, piece of that frog when that shrimp gets full up and goes back to his den. So a few more kilometers up the creek. We've been walking all day by this point and we were exhausted. It was really hot as well. But we noticed there was a lot of fish in this section of the creek. So we stopped and had a look at what they might be. And here we go, they're another species of gudgeon. These are called purple spotted gudgeon, and these are some of my favourite gudgeons. I've even got some in my ponds. Now the purple spotted gudgeons have these distinctive purple spots on their bodies. And the males, they'll become really dark, and they'll get these bright green patches on their fins and around those spots. They get really colourful. And the female, they'll lay their eggs on a rock or a smooth bit of wood and then the male will guard those eggs and he won't let anything near them he won't even let the female back near them once those eggs are laid the male is the only fish that's going to be looking after them and then they'll hatch and they'll go and hide underneath the rocks and sticks and leaves and they'll eat the little microorganisms until they're big enough to take on uh, little crustaceans like shrimp and crayfish and they'll also eat any insects that land in the water. And gudgeons, are, they keep really still. That's their method of hunting. They'll just keep really still in one spot and then they'll strike when something goes by them. And they're really quick when they strike. I think they're a really beautiful fish. And they're common. They're pretty, pretty easy to find them all throughout southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales. And here's some firetail gudgeons. Don't they have a beautiful red and white fin? And their, that fin at the end of their body, that's got a nice red tinge to it as well. They keep even stiller than the purple spotted gudgeons. And they'll eat smaller prey 
They'll eat little microorganisms. They'll eat little baby shrimp. They'll even eat little baby fish if they can get some small enough. And they'll eat insects as well. Here's two purple spotted gudgeons. One's puffing up their mouth either to say, keep away from me, or to say, hey, look at me, I'm a big, tough gudgeon. You can see this one's probably a male because of those colourful green and purple spots all over their body. Oh, I think they're so cool. And now we only saw small purple spotted gudgeons here, but they can get two or three times the size of these. All the fish in this river seem to be smaller than the other ones that we've encountered. And look how dark this fish is. Now these are either two males saying, this is my territory, keep away, or it's a male and a female. And the males might be trying to impress the female by attacking her, but he's going to learn that's not how you impress a female. But as I said, they could also be two males fighting one another. They'll change the colour of their bodies to become darker, but also brighter with those colours on them. Look how dark this one's got just in the time that we've been filming them. And that beautiful blue behind their gills. And in the same section of creek, we saw some more crimson spotted rainbows. These weren't anywhere near as colourful as the ones we saw further down the creek, but they still had a nice bit of colour in them. That's a nice male that we're looking at there. He's not as colourful as some of the other males. Ah, oh, this male. This male was so colourful. He had a really dark colour to him though. You can see he's got a dark red and a really dark patch on his tail. And you can see that female, she's impressed by him. So she's following him around. And he's also showing off to the other males to say, look at me, look at my colours, that you've got no chance with my ladies. Aren't they beautiful? It was so promising to see such good numbers of these fish in the river. They've no doubt been living in this river for thousands and thousands of years. It's quite remote and there's no other rivers near this one. I was just so impressed by how dark this rainbow was. I've never seen them quite as dark as this guy. Hopefully he breeds and there'll be lots of babies that get that same dark coloration. You can see there's some algae behind them that's got lots of bubbles from where it's photosynthesizing. And there's no shrimp to keep down the algae, so that's why there's so much of it. We've come across this fallen over tree which has come down in one of the recent storms. Now, when it rains a whole lot, these creeks will fill up and they'll push down any sticks and leaves from up further on the creek and they'll accumulate around this fallen over tree. And the fish, they'll hide in this floating debris pile. They feel safe from predators under there because the predators can't get in where these little fish can get. So let's have a look at what fish are living underneath this floating pile of debris. And straight away, we can see some lovely rainbow fish. That's a big school of rainbow fish. And there's also some firetail gudgeons hanging out in the same spot. They're so well camouflaged you can barely see them, but they're underneath the rainbows in this shot. Now debris piles like this are vital for the fish because when they have babies, the babies can hide in these debris piles and feel nice and safe from any predators. It was really interesting seeing these schools because 
They were large schools, but they weren't of only one species. They were a mix of rainbow fish and smelt. But we didn't see many smelt in schools of their own. We only saw a few in the schools with the rainbow fish. But the smelt was so fast moving, it was really hard for me to get a good look at him. I was trying to find any little shrimp in this section of the creek, but couldn't see any of them. And here comes along a lone spangled perch. No doubt looking for something to eat. I wonder why he wasn't with his school. They're such a fast moving creature. I was really lucky to capture them on camera. But then he went off into the debris pile to have an investigate around at what's going on in there. And now for that mystery fish that we saw at the beginning. You'll never believe what we have just discovered. We found an eel tail catfish, one of Australia's weirdest underwater creatures. You can tell it's an eel tail catfish because of that distinctive eel tail. And it's got these barbels on its mouth which look like whiskers, which is where it gets the name catfish. A catfish is basically one big tongue. It has taste receptors all over its body, but it'll use those barbels to map out its environment when it's a really murky river and it can't see very well. And it'll try and find prey with them. And what we found is a catfish's nest. And to make a nest, these catfish will spend weeks clearing out a big circle in the river They'll get all the debris and leaves and sticks and rocks out of the way and they'll make a nice smooth uh, sunken in circle and then they'll put little pebbles all around the river into their uh, nest that they've made. The female will come along, lay her eggs in the middle there and then the male will fertilise the eggs. When they're babies, they'll use those little pebbles to hide in from any prey that might come along and try and, try and eat them. Uh, but then when they grow up a bit more, they don't need the protection of the circle anymore and they'll go off and make their own lives somewhere in the river. This is a particularly healthy, fully grown eel tail catfish here. You can see them guarding their nest. What an amazing creature. Let's get a good look at this eel tail catfish from underwater. Some people think they're an ugly fish, but I think they're beautiful. You can see this one's no doubt had a few battles in their time by those chunks missing out of their fins. Now you can see their mouth sort of faces down so they're going to be good at eating anything hiding in the rocks or on the bottom of the creek. It's unlikely that they'll swim up to the surface and have a go at insects. However, if any insects come down or they feel there's an opportunity there, they will go for them. But they'll go for little fish, but mainly crustaceans, little fish that are hiding in the rocks. That's what they'll eat. And they can live for quite a while. It's not uncommon for them to live up to 10 years. And you can see this one's guarding their nest. Now it'll take them about two weeks to make their nest and then uh, the female will come along and if she's impressed with that nest then she'll breed with this male and he'll look after the nest to make sure no other predators come and get in there. You can see it's a pretty big nest and these are pretty big catfish. They can get up to 50 centimetres long and weigh a few kilograms. They also have a spike on their fins, so you don't want to be handling these fish because that spike is venomous and it will really hurt if you get spiked by them. Aren't those rocks pretty? What an amazing journey it's been. 
I can't believe the incredible species that we came across to on our adventures today. I hope you enjoyed learning about them and seeing them in their natural environments. Keep it murky. We'll see you next time.